All right, anatomy students, we're getting down to the end of the special senses unit. So all we have left is to talk about the ear, which you're going to find out the ear gives us two senses. Not only does it allow us to hear, but it actually gives us our balance and equilibrium. So we're going to talk about those today in lessons. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the ear. Again, the ear is going to give us two uh, senses one is hearing or audition and the other is going to be balance or equilibrium so audition is the process of hearing it is accomplished by the organs of the ear so typically when we hear the ear we think about this fleshy appendage that's attached to the sides of our heads but in all actuality that is just a small part of our ear there's a whole lot more going on inside your head the ear is an engineering marvel because its sensory receptors can transduce sound vibrations with amplitudes as small as the diameter of an atom of gold into electrical signals 1,000 times faster than the eye can respond to light. Okay, So that means you can hear something faster than your eyeball can... Uh, the pupil can constrict or can uh, dilate based on the response to light. So your ear works uh, pretty quickly in letting you know what's going on uh, around you, what, what uh, auditory stimulation you have going on around you. The ear also contains receptors for equilibrium or your balance. Your ear has three principal regions. The external ear, which is its job is to collect and channel sound waves into the middle ear which uses a bony system to amp amplify sound vibrations you're going to find out that you have three very small bones in your middle ear and then you have the internal ear which generates action potentials to transmit sound and balance information to the brain the anatomy of the external ear includes the auricle or pinna, and that is basically when people say their ear, this is what they're talking about, uh, that uh, flap of skin and cartilage on the outside of their head, which as its definition says is a flap of elastic cartilage covered by skin and containing seruminous glands. Hopefully we all remember from the integumentary system that the seruminous glands are the glands in your ear that produce cerumen or earwax. Your external ear is a curved one inch long external auditory canal situated in the temporal bone leading from the meatus to the tympanic membrane. All right, so remember uh, the opening from the skeletal system unit the opening in that bone for your ear canal is called the external auditory meatus. Your tympanic membrane is also known as your eardrum. And just in case you can't see, our eardrum is going to be right here. And so what we're going to find out is that your pinna or auricle, your ear, is going to funnel sound waves they're going to travel down your ear canal and then they are going to strike your tympanic membrane or your eardrum and it will vibrate very similar to a drum the skin on a drum when you strike it with the drumstick it vibrates and causes sound waves well sound waves are going to hit this membrane and those vibrations are then going to pass on down the line and that's what we're getting ready to talk about now. From there we go to the middle ear. The middle ear is an air filled cavity in the temporal bone. It is lined with epithelium and contains three auditory ossicles. And remember anytime we see ossi this means bone. And so those are going to be the three bones that are found in the middle ear. Those bones are in anatomical circles are referred to their anatomical names are the stapes the incus and the malleus and their common names are stapes is stirrup the incus is the anvil and the malleus is the hammer and 
they're listed here in reverse order as sound waves would be passed through them so sound waves again so here's your ear canal right here so sound waves are going to come down the ear canal they're going to strike the eardrum or tympanic membrane and it will vibrate similar to a drum skin will vibrate and then that vibration will pass down the malleus or the hammer and that vibration then passes down the incus or anvil and then that vibration will pass down the stapes or stirrup and this is just part of our uh, our hearing pathway so here's a shot just to give you an idea of how small those bones are so here's to give you reference obviously we have a dime so we all know how big a dime is and then here are the three bones the malleus the incus and the stapes and as you can see if you draw a circle around that and bring it down here that would easily fit so about you know that's about the same size uh, that would easily fit those three bones would fit uh, on a dime so they are very very small and now these green colored bones over here these are going to be the bones that we find in your inner ear and we haven't talked about them yet but as you can see they are also not very big so we have your cochlea which is your organ of hearing and your semicircular canals which is what's going to give us our balance and equilibrium the eustachian or auditory tube connects the middle ear with the nasopharynx or upper portion of the throat so uh, if you were a kid and you had a lot of ear infections um, what happens is as you grow so fast your eustachian tube it's supposed to drain uh, fluid and um, mucus from your ear down into your nasal cavity so that you can get rid of it but as you grow sometimes those the angle of those tubes or just the fact that they they just can't keep up with the bone they don't grow right or they're constricted off or whatever the reason is they don't adequately drain fluid from the ear into the nasal cavity nasal cavity and then that fluid be, is what leads for you to get an ear infection so if you had a lot of ear aches as a kid you may have had tubes in your ears which are little tubes that they put in to help those ears drain uh, the eustachian tube it, it consists of the bony and hyaline cartilage and is normally passively collapsed it opens to equalize pressure on each side of the tympanic membrane so if you have ever uh, flown or if you've uh, if you swim you've snorkeled or dove down uh, deep into the water um, you can feel the water pressure squeeze in on your eardrum and it's uncomfortable and you can equalize uh, your your ear pressure so um, if we have time I may give a, a little demonstration video on that all right so here's my quick little demonstration video on how to equalize the pressure on the inside of your eardrum so you won't have to do this when you're just out in the atmosphere um, our bodies are able to do that just by swallowing or yawning that equalizes the pressure as we go up and down in altitude but water on the other hand much heavier so you need a little extra help so when you dive down you take a big breath and you swim down you know below 8 10 12 feet deep the deeper you go the more the water pressure squeezes in on your eardrums so the water pushes in the air in your middle ear isn't pressurized enough to keep the water from pushing in on your eardrum so what you have to do is to equalize the ear pressure in your middle ear and the way you do that is you have to push air up the eustachian tube to increase the air pressure on the inside of your on the inside side of your eardrum so the way you do that is you pinch your nose and you gently start to try to blow air out your nose and with your nose closed it has nowhere to go so it finds its way up the eustachian tube and then that air pressure will work its way to behind your eardrum and will equalize and the deeper you go uh, the more you have to equalize when I was in the Bahamas I did a deep dive well, I was much younger and much more in shape um, and we had a deep dive contest out at the drop-off and on a single breath I dove down to 63 feet deep 
and while I went down, I equalized my ears about four times. That's the trick on how to equalize the ear pressure when you're diving underwater. Uh, but if you've ever flown, and, or, or if you've just driven up a large hill, uh, or, or gone down a large hill, as you descend, you feel the pressure on your ears, you either yawn or swallow, and you feel your ears pop, and it gives you relief. Uh, so if you've, gone, if you've been in an airplane and you have flown, you, as you gain altitude, you feel that pressure change. And that's the change in the atmosphere, the atmospheric pressure pushing in on your eardrum, and when you swallow or yawn, that allows the eustachian tube to equalize the pressure so it's the same on the inside and the outside of your eardrum. Now, hopefully that makes sense. The internal ear or the inner ear is also called the labyrinth. Uh, it's kind of a maze is where they got that name because of its complicated series of canals. Structurally, it consists of two main divisions, the outer bony labyrinth that encloses the inner membranous labyrinth. So the outer bony labyrinth uh, has a more complex network of tissue inside called the membranous labyrinth. And as you could probably ascertain, it is a layer of membranes inside the bone. The bony labyrinth is divided into two areas, the semicircular canals, the vestibule and the cochlea. I'm sorry, it's bone into three areas. I said two. It reads, the word is there. I just didn't read it right. All right. So it's three areas. Semicircular canal, the vestibule, and the cochlea. The vestibule is the middle part of the bony labyrinth. The cochlea is located anterior to the vestibule and is the organ of hearing. And then you have the three semicircular canals. So these are our areas. Your vestibule is going to be right here. This is the cochlea. And we're going to find out how the cochlea allows us to hear. And then these are your semicircular canals. And these are going to give you your equilibrium and your balance. The snail-shaped cochlea contains the hearing apparatus. There are two types of fluid found in that part of your ear called the perilymph and the endolymph. Those fluids will fill three different internal channels called the scala vestibuli, the scala tympani, and the cochlear duct. So this is a cross section uh, of that spiral part of this part right here. So if we cut across and look inside, that's, that's this view. All right, and so these are the three areas the scala vestibuli, the scala tympani, it's in here, and then your cochlear duct is going to be right there. And those three chambers will run through the cochlea and give you that spiral. So movements of the hair cells in contact with the tectoral membrane transduce mechanical vibrations into electrical signals which generate nerve impulses. So the frequency of sound waves are transmitted into the cochlea. Those frequencies will stimulate the fluid inside those three ducts in a particular manner. And these hairs, or these tiny hairs here, are only sensitive to certain frequencies. So when that vibration comes down the fluid, it and the, the waves in that fluid will be in the frequency of the sound that you heard. And these hairs are sensitive to particular frequencies. All right, guys. Um, that is going to be the end of Special Senses Video Lesson 3A. Um, I do have just a couple minutes left that's going to put me over that 15-minute mark for YouTube. And the, the remaining part of our hearing is going to be video lesson 3A, how we hear. And it's just going to be a summary of how we hear. And it's just a couple minutes. So find that video and watch it. And then after that video, you can go to Schoology and find the exit slip for lesson 3A, which will include the small video of how we hear. Okay, so go do that right now.